Hi, I'm David. In this video, I'm going to look at creating a synth sequence from scratch, and I'm going to do it in using the Melbourne Instruments Nina synth, and also um, within just a standard synth, I'm going to use Carbon Lecture to demonstrate it. I just want to note that this video will be part of the sound design course released by the School of Synthesis Q4 2023. So you're watching this video on launch. It won't be out yet, but it'll be out very, very soon. Also, the tune that we're going to be working in the second half of this video is a tune that I've made from scratch for an up and coming video game. And on Wednesday, the uh, 3rd of October, let me just check that. Yep, Wednesday, sorry, Wednesday, 4th of October at 10 a.m., it's going to be streamed live on the Plugin Boutique channel. Um, so don't forget to check out Plugin Boutique channel um, next Wednesday, the 4th of October at 10 a.m. UK time. You can watch it on the channel after that, of course. So two things, um, this is part of a creative summary from the up and coming sound design course and I'm going to dissect how to make this tune live on a Plugin Boutique live stream on their channel Wednesday 4th of October at 10am UK time. Hope you enjoy the video. I'm David, uh, welcome to creating a synth sequence. So a bit of a sound design little tutorial and what I want to do here is I want to kind of look at the way I've always used sequences to create a synth sequence, a lead sound, a lead riff, whatever you want to call it. Um, I very much like to do this in the box um, with things like the old school 303 or modern sequences that I have in this room. But I've also got the amazing Nina synth from Melbourne Instruments, which is no coincidence I'm from Melbourne. I'm very proud of this company. It's done an amazing job. The world's first Fully analog synth with total recall and motorized faders. It's fantastic. It's also got a little sequencer and it sounds absolutely fantastic. So I, I'm going to do everything in the box and then I'll head over towards the computer and run things there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize a patch. And now you can hear me playing some notes. Okay. Um, pretty straightforward, basic patch. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into record mode and I'm going to hit the keyboard so then I, it records every note that I play. Um, this is laid out um, just as per notes, the red notes indicating the, uh, the red highlighted notes indicating the, um, the flats, if you like. So um, everything's starting at C. So I'm going to kind of try and write, I like to write synth sequences in a triplet feel so I can sit amongst the 4-4 four, four, and just really gives us that that nice movement and that nice fast lead kind of sound. So I'm going to go C, C, and I'm going to come over and do a uh, D sharp or an E flat. Uh, and in this case, I can see it's highlighted there. It's the, um, the uh, number four on the keyboard here. Um, and I'm going to repeat that process again, but this time I'm going to go up to the, um, the perfect fifth, which uh, in this case would be G. And now I'm just going to repeat that. So you can see I'm going two, two, and then highlighting the third note. I'll show you what this looks like in the door later on. And now I'm going to go an octave above. Same thing, two, two, octave above, two, two, octave above. And that's going to sound something like this. Okay, at the moment it's too slow. So I'm going to hit the sequencer and I'm going to come into the note value and I'm going to make that run in sixteenths. And that's going to sound more like this. Cool. Um, I'll just add a little bit of release. Uh, I might just change the wave type a little bit. Um, great. Now, one of the things I want to do is I want to I want the cutoff filter. That's this filter here. To snap back for each note, for each one of those notes in sequence, each one of those 16th notes. There's a few ways to do this, but you can see here the Nina has a modulation envelope um, assigned to the filter using the filter as the destination and using envelope generator one as the source. Pretty standard on any analog synth. Okay, there's a few ways I can do this. If I turn the cutoff all the way down and turn the envelope up, and if I just reset the envelope generator, so zero attack, zero decay, zero sustain, 
the decay is basically what's going to happen is the attack says it's going to take no time at all for me to open up that filter and the decay time is going to then come into play and show how how quickly it's going to turn the cutoff. So if I hit play, you won't hear anything, but if, as, as I open up the decay and I just open up the sustain and release just a little bit, you'll hear that filter start snapping off. Here we go. And then I can also tell the envelope not to open the cutoff all the way. Oh, yeah, that's working. So what I might do now is I might um, just make it a little bit more interesting. I might actually add a little bit of delay, which is really cool on the Nina because you can just turn the effects end up. It takes me straight to the, the menu, um, the effects menu, and I'm going to say, okay, let's use a delay, and I'm going to turn the delay level up, um, and I'm going to come into delay time i'm going to turn the sync on and come into the delay time and i'll i will make it um uh, i will make it a dotted fourth okay so that basically will delay it quarter notes and a half if you like um so here we go i'm going to hit that and turn that effect up nice Okay, now what's really cool is I can start adding in more oscillators. So here we go. Let me add in the second, the second oscillator, and I might, I might turn the second oscillator down an octave. So I hit the course button, turn it down. So I have a few things I can play with here. I can play with the cutoff. I can play with the decay, and I can play with the amount. So how quickly the um, filter cutoff snapshot, how far it opens up, and uh, of course I can drive into the filter as well. And I can add another oscillator. I can obviously also play with the amp envelope just to shorten that sound down. Cool. Now what I really like about the Nina and what's really unique about it is I can morph between two patches. So if I was to swing the morph button over while I'm playing, you'll hear it play the B patch. At the moment we're listening to the A patch. Here we go. Now if you hit the A, B button, I can actually change the parameters of the B patch and that will really enable me to swing between the two. Okay, here we go. Let's make this, let's blend it a little bit. Let's make it a bit more of a sine wave. Okay, I can change the envelope amount. Now what this enables me to do is if I swing back, you can see when I switch patches, the Nina's just automatically showing me the parameters. What's really cool about this is performing live enables you to actually swing between the two patches. So I can really accent those octave jumps. Here we go. And of course, when I'm swinging between the two, I can actually start to affect the parameters. So at the moment, I'm on patch A, so I can swing that around. And I can play with the cutoff between the two as well, which is really cool. Yeah, cool. So it gives me lots of options. I've even got an overdrive straight in there. I can change the pitch of the oscillators. I can 
move over to the second one. Quickly I can change the pitch of those oscillators. And of course, yeah, there's, there's just so much I can do. What I want to do now is I want to um, basically run over to the door and show you. I'll program the notes in so you can see what I'm doing. And then we'll come back and we'll see how that integrates really nicely into a tune. Okay, so here I've got an idea for a tune. And what I want to do is I want to basically write the same type of sequence that I wrote in the Nina, but show you how I do it within the door. I'm going to use Carbon Lecture. It's a pretty straightforward synth. Um, and it's very easy to see what's going on. So uh, let's have a quick um, play through the tune. Kind of has that section, and it's also got this B section here. Okay, so let's begin writing that sequence. Um, the only difference here is I will make it slightly longer. The Nina I did, I used a one bar sequence. So now I'm gonna use a two bar sequence just to give me a little bit more variety. And what I'll do is I'll cycle around that, I'll solo that, um, and I'll bring up the carbon lecture synth and I'll start writing some notes. Okay, so there's our two bars there, okay, and... We're going to start on the note of C. Um, what I was doing in the Nina was kind of doing this repeat, you know. Yeah, that kind of vibe there. But what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm actually, just to make it a little bit more musical, um, I'll still write in steps of three, but I'll go root, third, um, let's start root, third, fifth. So C, the D sharp, the G, and I'll repeat that pattern. You can see I'm doing it in, in patterns of three, if you like. Repeat that pattern. I'll always go root minor third, but now I might add a, an F. Um, and I will go back to where I was and go root minor third, fifth. Um, and now I'll do a, an octave jump, if you like. Still root minor third, up an octave. Um, and I'm kind of ending the bar and starting again because that that makes me fit into that 4-4, four, four, but it still gives me this double triplet feel, if you like. Um, so I'll repeat that again. Um, root, minor third, fifth, perfect fifth. Um, and now I might just finish off on doing octave jumps all the way, just basically create four octave jumps. And that really gives me the, right, the opportunity to, to open it up. Um, okay, and you'll see what I mean in a second, and then just finish again. And that gives me that triplet feel. How's it sound? That's just on a standard initialized patch there. You can see that's just a very blank patch. And you can see it there in the tune. Yeah, cool. Okay, so now I want to start doing exactly the same thing that I was doing in the Nina, which is to ask the filter to snap down. So what I'll do is I will have the filter um, snap down and I'll turn the modulation envelope up. And so basically it's saying this modulation envelope here is going to ask that filter to open up and then close. So what will happen is that the filter is in a closed position and it'll take zero time because the attack's on zero to open up all the way. So it'll go bang straight away. And the decay here is, is indicating or dictating how quickly that snaps down with every note. Let's have a listen. Yeah, cool. And so that now gives me a few parameters to play with. Just keep playing those notes. I can keep playing those notes, but I've got quite a few parameters. I can um, tell the modulation envelope how far I want it to open up that filter. Okay. 
I can tell it how quickly I want it to close the filter. Very quickly, not so quickly. And I can also indicate the starting position of the cutoff. So straight away, if, let's say I was to start in that kind of you know closed position, what I'll do is I will just hide the carbon lecture and I'm gonna repeat that, the MIDI region, all the way across those uh, 16 bars, there's 32 bars, I should say. Uh, so now I've got it going the whole way and straight away, you know, Yeah, cool. You get the idea. Um, I've actually got a Native Instruments replica just here, and it's just a delay. Uh, what have I got it set to? This time I've got it set to dotted eighths. So I had it in dotted fourths, so this will be twice as fast. Um, and if I turn it on, that just kind of gives me that nice delay sound off it. Yeah, so that really gives me that, it fits it in a little bit better and that really starts to give me a lot of variety when I'm playing through. So let me play through uh, the tune and let's say we're going to start in this position. You can see how I can really change that sound around quite a lot. See me opening it up on the jumps. Yeah, cool. So hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Um, I think my takeaway from it is it's a really nice um, easy patch to start programming on any synth, be it a digital synth or an analog synth, just like I did on the Nino here, as I've done in Carbon Lectra. And it's a really nice way if you kind of think of writing in patterns of thirds, and you can jump anywhere between, you know, any of the notes really within the scale that you're using. Um, you get that real nice triplet feel, and then you have this kind of nice movement. It's a very old school technique, but it's a very modern technique as well. And by assigning the modulation envelope to the cutoff filter, it really gives you that flexibility of playing around with how the sound opens up, how quickly it snaps back, and just generally how it moves. Um, it's a really nice filler for any tune, and it's very, very easy as a starting point. Hope you enjoyed the How to Make a Synth Sequence tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.